does get confusing when we have all of these things put together. So try to just focus on the only restrictions is when you see marks and sign negative, you know, the negative one thing. So again, I'm asking for the cosine of an angle whose cosine is this. So therefore, I'm going to just cross it out and give you that. The sine of an angle whose sine is 0.7, 7 tenths. This guy, do I erased it, but I just replaced it. Find the sine of 3 pi, plug it in. So I'm looking for the arc sine of 0. There's my restriction. This guy over here, inside my parentheses, this is where my focus is right now. Tan is a regular tangent. Where do I find 11 pi over 6? Well, okay, let me separate this out again. I find 11 pi over 6 right here. This is a regular 0 to 3, 6 because it just says tan. So I fill in my angle. I know that 6 goes into 180, 30 degrees, so I've got a 30 degree reference angle. I fill out my triangle. If I want, I can do this. You need to know those special triangles. Now, what is the tangent of this guy? The tangent is y over x, so the tangent is negative 1 over radical 3. So I'm going to replace this with negative 1 over radical 3. God bless you. So now I have a restricted angle. <coughs> and where do I locate tangent that's negative? In the same spot, right? In the same spot. I'm still in this one here, and now what am I what am I asking for? Am I asking for a ratio or an angle? Angle. I'm asking for an angle. Good. It, it's just the same as arc tan. Arc tan, tan negative one. I want an angle whose tangent is in the restricted zone here. Negative one over radical three. So now my answer has to be negative thirty degrees or negative pi over 6. So this has to be my answer. Because where is my tangent? From negative 90 to positive 90. That's why I tell you, always write your restricted domains down. Otherwise, you're tempted to say, oh, that's that angle 330 over there. It can't be without out of that range of numbers, negative 90 to positive 90. So let me change this a minute. Where do I find 5 pi over 6? Quadrant 2. Quadrant 2, right? If this is 6 pi over 6, I find it in quadrant 2, right? This is 6 pi over 6, 12 pi over 6, I find it here. 30 degree reference angle. So x is negative radical 3, y is positive 1, r is 2. Okay. What is the tangent of 5 pi over 6? Negative 1 over radical 3, isn't it the same thing? Still a 30 degree angle, isn't it? And in quadrant 2, isn't my tangent negative? Mm -hmm. But my restricted angle can never be in 2, right? I don't care what that is, because I just want a regular angle. Now, I know what it is, so now I'm asking tan negative 1. Same thing I asked over here. So what quadrant is that bringing me to when I restrict that tangent? 4. Four. So 4, where is tangent negative? In a restricted zone. 4. So I'm looking again at this angle right down here. And not in quadrant 2 anymore. I took the tangent from that angle and I just swapped it in there. And I said, where is tangent negative? Quadrant 4. It brings me back to this guy. Okay? Same process that you did down here. It's just coincidentally this happened to be the same exact angle when we looked at it. This is a different a different quadrant. So when I look up this guy, I do it the same way. I'm in quadrant two. My tangent is still negative. So now I ignore everything that I just did. And I say, where is tangent restricted? One and two. Out of one and two, where is it positive? One, where is it negative? Two. So where am I going to find this 
restricted angle. What quadrant? Four. So I drop my triangle and I say tangent is y over s. So I recognize this. This is my 30. So this is negative pi over 6. It has the same exact answer. It has to. It's a restricted angle. Tangent is positive in 1, negative in 2 for a restricted angle. That's where you got Grant, do you see it? Yeah. See it? Mm -hmm. Who doesn't see it? I need, this is what I need to see. It just so happened, coincidentally, that one and landed in quadrant four, where we were looking in quadrant four. So could I find it in quadrant two? Could I do this? Get rid of that. So what would you get for this? Work this out for me. Shouldn't even have to pick up your pencil. <coughs> this bottom one, arc tan, tangent seven pi over six. Pi over 6. Did you say pi over 6? Yes. Pi over 6. How? Huh? How? I don't know. How? Where is this, where is this guy located? Quadrant 3. We already know what the tangent is of a 30 degree angle, don't we? So all the three, all the twice, two times that we did it already, what was the tangent of a 30 degree angle without the sign? 1 over radical 3. So somewhere it's going to look like this. Is this going to be 6? There's 7. It's going to be here. And is tangent positive or negative in quadrant 3? Positive. So I, this is no new information to me. So now I say I want a restricted angle whose tangent is 1 over radical 3. So O is positive. Tangent is positive in 1. It's negative in 4. So what angle is my 30 degree angle here? Pi over 6. You shouldn't even have to pick up your pencil. We have all the information that we've been doing. Can you see it now? It's just, what happened the first time, it was a coincidence that it landed in the same quadrant. So I think you guys were looking for it to be in the same quadrant. It doesn't have to be. Whatever's inside of this, you do this first. So let's jump over here. Where is 5 pi over 2? 90 degrees. So I'm really not sure. So let me count. This is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. Oh, 5 pi over 2. You are so right. It is at 90 degrees. So what am I replacing this with? What is the sign of 5 pi over 2? 1, right? <laughs> so I'm taking this out and I'm saying 1. So now I want the sign, of, uh, I want the angle, a restricted angle, whose sign is 1. Sign goes again from here to here. It can only be in these parts. So what is my angle? 90 pi over 2. But we found our angle at 5 pi over 2. It's the same angle, isn't it? Just by coincidence, it happens to be the same, same angle. So what if I said this? We did 3 pi, right? Same, same difference. That says sign. Find me the sign of 3 pi. 0, 1 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. So I'm putting a, God bless you. I'm putting a 0 in here. 
Doesn't matter where I found it. Now I want a restricted angle whose sine is zero. So I look from here to here, and where is it? Zero. My original angle was at 180, wasn't it? But my restricted angle sine is at zero. I can't come over here to 180. It's out of my restricted domain. But if I shoot across here, isn't that the same sign as zero? So my answer, as we did this one before, but I thought now it maybe would look a little bit better. Okay, here's another good one. I'm doing this first. Because this angle has to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 like a number line. So I can only give a restricted angle in this area. How do you know that over the restricted Because we restricted these ourselves. We said sine curve goes like this. So we said we start in quadrant one, we come until we hit the crest. Because we can't, we can't fail a horizontal line test. Then we come backwards. So this is at negative pi over two. This is that positive pi over 2. So I can only look. This is where I get my quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. This is why for sine, we do this all the time. Because it's always positive in 1, negative in 1. For each of your restricted functions, you have one positive quadrant, one negative quadrant. The bad part about sine and tangent is you can't label this a positive angle. You have to label quadrant 4 a negative angle. It has to go between here. So remember when I was first, oh, were you here yesterday? No. So that's why. Yesterday when we restricted this, always try to look at Edmodo if you can, guys. Because it's there, we re I record the lessons, so when you come in the next day, it won't be, like, overwhelming. What we, <clears throat> what we would do is we say, we can only, we have to make a true inverse on these. A true inverse has to pass a vertical and a horizontal line test. So when we do this, we come up here. And we say, whoops, I'll fail a horizontal line test if I go any further. If you notice, everybody always uses quadrant one. Because quadrant one, everything is positive in quadrant one. So we always, because we start your unit circle that way. We always start this way, from quadrant one. So I go until I can't go anymore, and then I have to go backwards. I get a positive and a negative. Now cosine works a little bit different. Cosine starts here. I can't go opposite. So I cut it here. And here's my quadrant one positive, here's my quadrant two negative. So cosine is restricted from zero to pi. So my final answer, if it's a restricted angle for cosine, has to be between zero and pi. Because it's a tangent and a sine, has to be from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. Okay, let me get some of this yucky stuff out of here. Let's talk this one a minute. So I go to my parentheses. That's what I have to do first. Just like your composition of functions, just like any time you do order of operation, right? So this is a regular little old tangent. So this is 4 pi over 4. This is 8 pi over 4. How many times does 4 go into 180? 45. So I've got a special right triangle. So x is negative 1, y is negative 1, r is radical 2. So I want to know the tangent. Tangent is y over x. Negative 1, negative 1. God bless you. My tangent is 1. So I take this guy out of here, and I replace it with a 1. So now I have a restricted angle. Find me an angle whose sine is 1. 1's and 0, quadrantal angle. So I come back over here again. Is my sine... Oops, is my sign x or y? Y. So I look from here because this is where my restricted domain goes. So, oh, there it is right there. So what's my answer going to be? Pi over 2. Is that within my restricted domain? Negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2? Mm -hmm. 1. From the tangent, the thing that I crossed out here. What is the tangent of 5 pi over 4? That's 1. We found 5 pi over 4 because it's located in this quadrant. This is 4 pi, 1 more is 5 pi. 4 goes into 180, 45 times is a special triangle. Tangent is y over x. 
So negative over negative. Remember, tangent is positive here and here. Any angle. That's what gets confusing about inverses. Because we know our special triangle. So you have to know your special triangle. You always take this number and divide it into 180. That's your degree. That's your angle. That's your reference angle. Okay. So far? All right. This guy, I have to look here first. Arc tan says what? Arc says where do I have to look? For, for tangent. One and four. The only places I can look. Agree? So I set it up like this. One and four. But I'm looking at a positive. So what quadrant between one and four is tangent positive? One. So I don't need this guy. I say, okay. Is that a three? Okay. So this says tangent y over x. Y is a four. X is a three. What is R? Five. This is a nice little triangle. Okay, so I, I found my angle. My angle is located in quadrant one. This is not a special triangle. I still can find it if I do second hand. But do I really need to find my angle? What do I need to know about this angle now? Just the sign. I don't need to know the angle. I need to know the sign. So I know where it's located. I know all my parts. So from here, I say sine of this angle is y over r, 4 over 5. This is my answer. Sine is a ratio. Cosine is a ratio. Arc sine is an angle. Arc cosine is an angle. Sine negative 1, an angle. Just like with your calculator. Did everybody kind of get this one? Are you seeing it? Okay. This guy? Okay, I have an angle. Sign. Any any kind of angle or a special kind? A restricted angle. Good. But I'm crossing it out. Sorry, I thought I was underlining it. Where is sign restricted? One and four. So again, I'm here. One and four. Oh, I notice it's positive. So what quadrant do I want? One or four? One. One. Get rid of this guy. Sign again is y over r. This is one of your triples also. Pythagorean theorem, and this comes out to be 7. These are all positive here, so I'm good to go. Just get this. I'm outside of your triangle, of your parentheses, and all I want to know from that triangle is the cosine. Cosine is x over r, so 7 over 25. There's my answer. It's just, go to your parentheses first, just like you do order of application. Y over X. This guy, I go inside my parentheses. What is this asking me to find? Arctan negative 3 over 5. What does that mean in words? What kind of angle? And what kind of, is this a special kind of angle? It's a restricted angle. Because I see the word arc or tangent negative 1. So an angle whose tangent is negative 3 over 5. Tangent is 1 and 4. I'm sorry, 1 and 4, but where is it negative? 4. There was no 1 here. So I'm, go, I'm down here. Tangent again is y over x. So I put this in here. Not one of my specials. So what am I? What do I want for this guy once I locate it? I want the secant. Uh, secant tells me I need the radius. So let me do Pythagorean's theorem and find my radius. So I have x is five. Oh, look down here first. If it was the cotangent, would I bother to find the radius? No. No. And 
always reduce your radical. Secant is the reciprocal of which function? Cosine. So cosine is x over r, so secant is r over x. I take r and I put it over x. And I get this. Last guy, again I have an angle who's restricted. This one's a different one because it's cosine. Cosine is restricted, and if I forget, I'll just make my cosine curve. I'll just drop a cosine curve. If I start at the zero and I go to quadrant one, I obviously can't go backwards. If I fail a horizontal line test, so I cut it. And I keep going down. I notice I pass through quadrant one, there's 90. I'm about to come to quadrant two, there's 180, and I failed my horizontal test. So I stop right there. So I have a positive and a negative of cosine here. Yep. And it's positive in one. It's negative in two. So I only want quadrant two. This is the different one. Tangent and sine work together, but cosine works different. So I label my triangle x over r. I say I just come out here to say what am I going to need? I'm going to need the sine. Oh, I am going to need the y. So I do Pythagorean theorem. I find the y. So I say, what is the sine of this angle? Sine is y over r. This is my answer. And sine in that quadrant is positive. Okay, give Amani your undivided attention. She's going to explain that she does it. <coughs> oh, yes. Yeah. She's fine. You're fine. Um, this is a work in progress. If something's wrong, we'll all help you out. Okay, so I'm drawing a graph. Um. <laughs> okay, so start. Where, where's your focus first? In the parentheses, so where do you find that? What quadrant? Oh, one and four. One and four, so which one will you use? One or four? One. One. How come? Because it's positive. It's positive. There you go. Good place to start. Everybody starting like Imani? Good. One and four is her choices. Because it's positive, she's in one. Go ahead. Label. You do what you did on your paper. Okay. <coughs> Um, you can just fill that in. And you knew it was that because she did Pythagorean theorem, or she knew it was a triple. Okay, now what? Yep. Everybody get what you did? Okay, inside of parentheses, she's looking for a restricted angle because it says arc. Thank you, Amani, that looks great. Okay, anybody do want to do number six? Uh-huh. Explain what you're doing. Okay, well, I started in the parentheses. Okay. So I knew cosine would either be in one or two. And it's positive, so it would be one. I think, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Everybody's positive in one. So then I labeled it. 
And then I did Poseidon and uh, that was so funny. That doesn't look like a zero, but whatever. Um, yeah, very hard on the board to write. <laughs> and then, yeah, I did x equals radical 5. And did you reduce that for radical 20? I did at the end. Okay, that's fine. Okay, the end is good. And then, since it's sine, I did y over r equals 2 radical 5 over 5. And remember, remember to reduce your radicals as well. Okay, Bram, you're on. All right. Are we going to do what everyone does? Uh, uh, you got to look in the parentheses. So I found that it was negative, so I put it in the fifth part, the fourth part, right? Good. Everybody know why? Tangent is restricted to one and four. Okay. Okay. So then I just labeled the triangle. I got L, negative 5. And that the Pythagorean's theorem, I found out that this was a 13. Okay. So I, mean, I can do it right here. So I'll look at triangle. I have a negative 5. All right, it's 13. Okay. And then, let me go up here. And then um, it's the cosecant. So I'll get cosecant is y over. R, and then I switched it to all the Y, right. and then all the Y gives us a 13 over 5, and then I just made it up again. Okay, very good. Very good. Everybody get what he did? Now, Sam, what made you decide that your Y was negative and not your X, since the negative is just sticking right out front there? Well, because I know that this way is positive for the X. Good. Good. Once you made a triangle, guys, remember where those negatives go. Once you make a triangle, the same rules apply as we did before. If y is negative, then the y gets the negative. If x is negative, then the, then the x gets the negative. It's the same thing that we did before. Good job. Anybody want to eight? Oh, really? Good. We'll work with you as you go. This is work in progress. Everybody, this is our safe zone. It's like Planet Fitness. This mm -hmm. is a safe zone. So. Okay, and you chose quadrant four because? Because it's, uh, our sign is restricted and it's negative oh. four. in four. Very good. Mm -hmm. Sign is restricted to one and four, negative in four. We're just going to stop you right there. So, what is sine? Sine is what part? Sine itself is what part? Oh, opposite over. Okay, so let's convert these. So we're going to make all these R's, X's, <coughs> R, R, A's. These are our Y's. So sine is Y over R. Let's start with that. Y. What chart? Y over X. Over sine? Y over R. Oh, you were right. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at tangent. I'm sorry. My mistake. Um, so 30. Yeah. 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 I didn't do it right on the paper, but I did. Oh, okay. Good. Um, and then, and Good. Y over X. Good. Um, so go to the oh, black first. Okay. It's too hard to erase. Just drag. I'll put the eraser on it. And now drag it over. <laughs> I can't get it to erase. So what is your y? Three. Now is either one of those negative? Oh yeah. The y. Good. Very good. You did it. Good. Yeah. Good job. You didn't have me to boost that up in there for a little bit. Okay. Everybody's good with that.